Yes, it is after New Year's by the time you're getting this, but it's still close enough to Christmas. And I heard that there were some gifts under the tree. So let's take a look. Let's go here. Christmas tulip. I bet those are from Scotty since he's working on the flower farm. Diamond of Friendliness. I don't know who brought that. And Soap's Silky Pick. I believe that came from Miss Lapis Lori. So thank you ever so much, everyone who left these little gifts. And I've left something else in each of these as well. But you're going to have to go check out everybody else's channels. All right. See you later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to more family-friendly gaming. It's Soap the Great. I'm over here on the Hypermind Vanilla server, and we're back at the downtown high rise. And I had a thought about a name. I was thinking of naming it the Hypertropolis Unity Building after the Manchester Unity Building it is based on that building in Melbourne, Australia. But I want you to let me know what you think. If you've got some other ideas for what we should call it, I'd like to hear that as well. So we're over here because we need to get ready. I mean, the building is done in terms of the structure, but we need to actually get ready for some tenants. And we can't get any tenants in here because we don't have a reception area. We don't have any way to welcome them in. And this is the door, okay? Just some some slabs to keep out any unwanted visitors like that cow over there or baby zombies, whatever. We need a door. We need a reception area. We need to hide the access to the basement. And we need a better way of getting into the interstitial area than just that that hole in the wall up on the first floor. And we're going to do that all in this episode. That's right. So first things first, we need to clean up down here. We need to get rid of the uh, nether brick and the floor. Let's bring this all into quartz. And we also need to get rid of these. Thanks, cow. We need to get rid of all these torches. And I'm not sure whether we're going to do that with uh, dropping down to the bottom half uh, on the slabs and making it non-spawnable or getting some interesting lighting fixtures, maybe a bit of both. I don't know. We'll see by the end of this. I don't have a plan. But first things first, I'm going to take a little cut, and we're going to have this whole area cleaned up. It's all going to be quartz, and then we're going to have the basement area hidden and have some sort of a little redstone deal where we can have a hidden torch key, open up something somewhere on the floor here so we can get into the basement and get into the maintenance area up top. So I'm going to take care of that off camera and then when I bring you back I can show you what I've come up with and then we will go from there. All right, see you in a moment. Ah, the day is just so getting away from us actually. Progress has been made ladies and gentlemen. Let's go in here and take a look at what we've got. Close off the door so we don't have any visitors. What do you think? Isn't this amazing levels of progress here? Can you see it? And you're probably wondering, what in the world are you talking about? Soap, you hardly have anything here. Well, I would like to point out that the torches are all gone. Isn't that cool? Yep, so we got rid of the torches. Job well done. That is the end of the episode. No, no, that's not it. That's not everything that was done. You can see that uh, instead of trying to go for some fancy lighting, I did some here and there, but... For the most part, I got rid of the torches by taking the floor to the lower half of the block, which means this whole area is non-spawnable. That was the big thing here. I wanted to get rid of the torches, but still make it safe. So when we have visitors, we only have visitors of hyperminers and not of, like, you know, creepers. You know, that's the big thing. No creepers. Uh, the others doesn't really matter so much. Witches, I mean, they'll... they'll mess you up certainly but they're not going to explode the building or anything so uh, the other thing here is that you can see i've got a redstone torch key before i get into that let's take a look at some of the design decisions here on the outer edge of the wall we've got quartz stairs so that gives it a little bit of an easier transition from 
this lower half to the upper half where the doors are. And you can see I've opened up a little bit for the back door and we'll put something out here eventually. Probably not this episode, but eventually we'll get a door and a little patio area back there. And I've got some ideas about that, but we'll get to that. Not this episode. Uh, you can also see that there are a couple of areas of the floor where I've got the top slab or top half. And that's here at the front door, at the back door, and then right here around the elevator core. So that, uh, well, I mean, this is kind of set in where it needs to be. So we couldn't really mess with that too much. And, and this one, it, it works well. And you can see the you know, I still had to make this non-spawnable, so the way I did that was with some sea lanterns, which reminds me, it's about time for a Guardian Farm update. So let's go take a look at that real quick. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're here on the nether side of the Guardian Farm. Let's go through here. The reason I'm starting out here is because, well, there's a lot of work that's been done, and you'll see it almost straight away. So, here we go. What do you think? First and foremost, the nether portal used to be up there. We've broken that. And Kondrick has gotten these all matched up. And right now, this is the one we come out into. So, this is how we now get to the Guardian Farm. And this is set up for the fellow Hyperminers to, to use. And so, they just pop down through there, down to here. This is a little bit of what Kondrick's vision is for this whole thing. We still got to carve out this section, carve that into the bowl, but last time we had a little check here, we were we had the farm fully operational. Okay, so that's not uh, nothing's changed there. It's still going and still producing immensely. Lots of drops here and it has been in use by fellow hyperminers, which is great. That's exactly what we had been hoping to see. So let's go up here, just give you a quick idea of the progress and then we'll get back to downtown. So we come up these steps. This is again, how most people are going to be dealing with this. This is the next section. No, 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 we're gonna be working on that section next, clearing out the water and then digging that all out but the first thing we have to do is get it down to level 30 on the inner side and then, uh, I don't know, level zero on the inner side, level 30 on this side, and then the bowl is gonna get carved out from bedrock up to level 30 to the water curtain over there. And that's the vision that Condrick has right there. You can kind of see that coming together. Cheaty water curtain on the outside. Looks great looks great and I'm excited but uh, that's the progress thus far we still have a lot to do and I need to eat but we're gonna be working on that quadrant over there next and that's really falling on to my shoulders while Kondrick finish finishes the design for this side he's still working on the concentric circles which are giving him a hard time especially on this scale so anyway that's it for the Guardian Farm progress for now. Let's go back to downtown Hypertropolis. See you there. All right, well, we're back here in downtown Hypertropolis. And let me show you some more of what we've gotten done here in this building, okay? So I talked about the lack of torches here and also that, um, well, that was the main thing. The, the other thing that I got rid of is that we no longer have our access to the basement right here. Oh, where did it go? Yeah, we got rid of that too. And the way I did that was with a little hidden mechanism somewhere around here. Can you guess where it is? Have you figured out? Guesses in the comments real quick. And all right, let me get out the redstone torch because that is how we're going to be getting into the basement. So we come right here. Oh, look at that. Little redstone torch key. You know I love those. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, I have put those in each of the previous servers somehow. 
any server I've been on, anything that I've done where I want to hide the mechanics, I put in a redstone torch key. And so this one's no different. So there we go. We got a redstone torch key here on Hypermine. And you can see that it opens up a little staircase down here and a hole up in the ceiling. Isn't that cool? We'll check that out in a bit, but let's go down the stairway here. And here we go. Okay, so first things first, this mechanism right here that I'm pointing at is the redstone torch key. This is a design by Zazuma Void, and I have a link to that in the description box below. So go check that out. And what I do is I have that on the top half slab or top half of the block. And then I take an output from it and put it into this some place that I don't have blocks in the bar. I want those. Let's get some dirt. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Okay, we'll, we'll jump up here. Stack jump, little dirt pillar. So I take an output from this block right here. That gives me a quick pulse. Send that into this T flip flop here. And then that goes to the mechanism over there. We'll take a look at that in just a bit. And then it goes over there and we'll take a look at that afterwards, okay? So we take that pulse out of the torch key, send or turn it into a signal using the T flip flop. And then over here, let's see if I can just jump up using this. No, you might have to stack. Okay, we got it. This is something of my own design. And I just had to put this together. It's hard to hard to maneuver. I did this in creative. It, um, not not creative here, but I put it together over my creative testing world and it, I found out it's a whole lot easier to move about in creative than in survival when you're doing this, especially when your floor is down there. I had to make a little dirt, a dirt, uh, dirt floor to get around here. But what we've got is we've got pistons on either side right there. It's kind of like a Jeb door and these pistons extend and then these pistons extend and then that puts our floor back in place okay and when we turn the whole thing off or rather open this thing up uh, what's going to happen is that these pistons retract they pull the floor down then these pistons retract pull that whole mechanism back and then these pistons extend giving us our little staircase and we'll see if we can show that for you real quick. Now it's something that I put together uh, fairly quickly and it's not uh, the most efficient by any stretch of the imagination. There you go. You can see it in uh, the closed state right now. Okay. It's not the most efficient in terms of space or resources, but you know what? It fits the space right here and it works for what we need it. So we need something that is flush with the floor and is kind of like a hidden staircase. And it's kind of a half hidden staircase, half hidden ladder. So this is closed. Let's go back and hit that button so we can get to the next section. And there we go. That opens that back up. So I, I will sometimes do tutorials for doors that I come up with. If you want a tutorial on this design, let me know in the comment section below. And it would have to be an amazing level of support for that for me to actually do one. Tutorials, that get great views, but they're very hard to put together. But let's come up here. The other thing down here is I, I wanted this to look a little more strong. You know how up in the penthouse I put in the columns to make it seem like something was holding it up. Same thing down here. I put this central core above some iron blocks and nobody's going to see it I know but it's just nice to have that one little detail taken care of but what we're going to do here is just follow this torch tower you can't see all of it it's kind of going off in this direction but we've taken output from that T flip flop you can see it right there kind of peeking around the corner we send that into this torch tower here we're going to climb this ladder 
And I found that we actually have just enough space to come up the side of that elevator. We send that torch tower into this line of redstone, and that opens up a kind of a downward facing jeb door as well, flush with the ceiling. And that uh, same mechanic, we push the ceiling down, and then we'll retract the ceiling, and then retract that whole mechanism. And that gives us access. You're wondering, how in the world do you get up there? You'll see in just a moment. I'll show you. But this gives us access to our interstitial space here. And then we can get all the way up to the top floor, the ninth floor rather, not the penthouse, but the top floor there. And uh, yeah, so I pulled out the ladders that I had right here. And that will give our tenants a little bit more leeway with these walls here. So they can take those out if they see fit but we'll have to leave the elevator core intact, which we need to do anyway. So what we're going to do is drop down here, and then I'll show you how we get up to the top. Okay, so we kind of have to back up a little bit, take an ender pearl, hold shift, and just chuck this up, and that should get us onto the ladder. And there we go. So we're in. What I'm going to do is just drop back down here. I could have used a regular ender pearl elevator with... Uh, what are they? Trip wires? The problem is those are going to break in 1.9 with how interpearls and string interact. So um, I I'm not doing that here. And this still might break. I'm not sure about resting torch keys in 1.9. We'll see. But when the time comes, we'll take care of that. For now, we're not on 1.9. We're on 1.8. So here we go. Next up, you, you see we've, we've still got problems. I'm going to close this. We got rid of the torches. That's one of the things that I really want to do. But it's kind of dark and drab and here. We want this to be light and airy and modern and clean. And it's just too dark. So we need to get some other lighting in here. We also need a little reception desk and maybe even a receptionist. I don't know. Getting receptionists here that are just going to stick around, uh, it's kind of hard. But we'll see if we can get one. But I'm thinking somewhere around here is going to be the receptionist desk. And then we can also have the mailboxes. Who knows? We'll see. Let's get the receptionist area done, and I'll bring you back once uh, once that's complete. And we should be coming to the end of our episode after that, but we'll see. Um, I'm not sure how long this clip has gone. But, uh, yeah, anyway, join me in just a bit. We should have a little bit more work done here in the lobby. All right, we're back. You might be wondering, why do you have a bottle in your inventory? It's because we just had a witch spawn over here. I wonder how she spawned. I need to get that mod. I think it's um, NEI, Not Enough Items. It's a client-side mod, but that would really help with figuring out which spots are spawnable and not. Anyway, let's come over here. We've got some interior decorating to show off. First things first is I've got this door, okay? I'm not proud of this door. This is not what I want long term, but for now it's going to work. It's a lot easier than knocking out a couple of slabs each time. What do we got over there? Do I have my cheaty zoom key? No. Optifine. Optifine's not working. We've got a guy over there. But let's go in here. And, oh, oh, get stuck, get stuck on the door. Okay, so I want to turn around real quick and show you. I, I found I waffled on too long about the redstone, and uh, so I just had to come in here and take care of this instead of doing a couple more jump cuts. But there we go. What do you think? We got some greenery in there around the elevator core and around the size, but uh, let's take this one at a time over here. It's the reception stand. Got a couple of spots for receptionists to just come here and take care of tenants or potential visitors. Got the laptops here as well as an intercom system. Okay, and then a couple of laptops back here as well. So, yeah, I had talked about potentially getting a zombie or a villager or something. That's not going to work it would close off this whole area a little too much. And I want to keep this open and and airy and modern. That's the feel that I'm going for and trying to corral a 
an NPC in here too much, too much. So we're going to keep it like that, and we'll just make sure we have somebody down here for when we do have visitors, okay? So next up is the, uh, the greenery. Around here we've got some bushes and some sugar cane. I picked sugarcane because it's got a little bit more of a bright green, which has a, a lighting effect of its own. But I don't know. I'm not sold on it quite yet. I do like the greenery around the elevator core. I like the water feature. I like the greenery kind of offsetting some of the stark white and then this nether brick. A little bit different color, but uh, let me know what you think about the greenery so far. Okay. I'm not set on it, so we can make some changes in the future. Also, we've got some light fixtures up here. We've got a little wall sconce. We're using hoppers for that. They're pointing into the wall to make it look like they're hanging from the wall. And then in the corners and around the elevator core, we've got another light fixture hanging from the ceiling. So let me know what you think overall about that. And then the next thing to take a look at here is the mailboxes. Okay, so each floor is set by a color we've gone over that already so we've got the brown for the first floor and so on all the way up to cyan for the penthouse and then we've got potentially two offices per floor and behind each one you notice it's not the same color but this is a dropper and so we can put mail in here so potential tenants what we're going to do is name an item and put it in this item frame and then we can leave mail for them they can come check that. So the only tenant so far is me up in the penthouse. And so I've named a couple of diamond blocks. And the reason why, well, I guess my favorite item would have been a comparator. So we could have done that. But this kind of sets it off as I'm the landlord here. So we use the diamond blocks to kind of signify that. Well, I'm actually kind of diamond poor at the moment between this and using up diamonds for picks for the guardian farm so uh, let me know what you think about the interior design so far but because we are getting short on time I do have one more thing that I want to show you and that is up in the penthouse we got some administrative stuff to take care of up there so I'll meet you up there and here we are up in the penthouse to take care of the administrative business of some patreon rewards so today we're putting up a monument for tabernacle and what we're going to be doing is just this named iron armor here. I'm going to put this on the, the armor stand like so. And if you're not sure what Patreon is, there is a link in the description box below. You can go check that out. That's the most promotion that I'm willing to do on a video for the time being. So feel free to check that out if you would like. Also, Tabernacle's Twitter profile. There's a little link to that in the description box below as well. So... Hopefully you have enjoyed this installment of Family Friendly Gaming, this first one of 2016, so Happy New Year to you. Let me know what you think of the lobby design down below. I'd love to hear from you either in the comments section below the video or on Twitter at MCSoapTheGreat. That's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.